Well, it has been called the most dangerous eight seconds in sports. PBR's premier tour is back in the Circle City for the first time in more than a decade. Professional bull riders are headed into the ring at Gainbridge Fieldhouse tomorrow night. The event marks the start of PBR's 2022 season, and our very own Fanchon Stinger will be watching those riders closely. If you didn't know, she actually owns two bulls who will be part of the exciting competition, and this morning, Fanchon joins us live from Morgan County along with the CEO and Commissioner of PBR, Sean Gleason. And Fanchon, first, so nice to see you bright and early. Second, tell us why you are in Morgan County. <laughs> Well, first of all, good morning, Melissa. Good morning to all our Fox 59 viewers. I am up right and early in Morgan County because I wanted to introduce you guys first and foremost to my bull, Stinger. There's Stinger right there. He is actually getting his morning breakfast. He is getting acclimated to his uh, environment right now. He is getting himself prepared to hit the dirt tomorrow night. This is going to be a historic weekend here in Indy. When you talk about the best bull riders in the world, the best bull athletes, animal athletes that you could ever bring, and the best music and pyrotechnic show in sports, all put on by this man who's also a very dear friend, Sean Gleason, the commissioner and CEO of the PBR. We're so excited to welcome the PBR family here to Indianapolis. Fanchon, this is wonderful and so exciting. Sean, please tell us about the big kickoff to the 2022 season. What brought the event back to the Circle City? Well, actually, Indianapolis has been on the schedule every year. Uh, it's been 10 years since we've gotten here, but it's like a jigsaw puzzle putting our schedule together, and it just hasn't worked out. And this year, uh, we're kicking off actually a weekend early to be here in Indianapolis. So. Uh, Having all of the, the bulls and riders here in town for New Year's is a great way, great place to kick off the season. That's wonderful. Sean and Fanchon, now for myself, like people like me, I don't know much about PBR and what all goes into this. So for those who maybe are looking for something to do and want to come out, why should they? What can they expect? Well, they can expect to see the top bull riders in the world against the top bulls week in and week out on the PBR Tour. For 28 years, we've been putting the best sporting product on the dirt. It's eight seconds of adrenaline-packed action. Um, these bulls are great athletes in their own rights, and the bull riders that uh, attempt to ride them are incredible athletes. We're just a very uh, down-home, historically uh, based sport that's been doing this for a couple hundred years. and. We just keep bringing it to these cities, great cities like Indianapolis, and everybody should come out and have a great family time. Yeah, and you know, one of the big things about bull riding is there are so many misconceptions around how the bulls are cared for and what makes the bulls buck. And I, you guys all know I am an animal lover. If you follow me, you follow my dog, Ari. Stinger is now my newest son, I would say, because our bulls are like family, and these bulls are bred to buck. There's a lot that goes into their history, the genealogy, their ancestry, so these bulls have all been bred to buck, much like a racehorse. They get the top care when it comes to veterinary care. They have chiropractors. They're never forced or goaded to do anything. There is a zero, zero tolerance policy when it comes to abuse or harsh treatment for animals in the PBR. So. It is one way that I am so proud to be able to um, just help educate people about the sport, how these athletes, these bull athletes are cared for, and they never go to slaughter. Um, so these athletes are, when you say top animal athletes in the world, I am just so proud to be honored to be a part of this, Sean, because you guys put a lot of care, not just into the bull riders and their care, but also into these animal athletes. Well, I could argue that the bulls are cared for better than the riders. <laughs> and when you have a 2,000 pound animal and a 150 pound cowboy, it's hard to, to not have it that way. But, you know, these bulls are special athletes. And like you said, they, you know, they live a life that most other cattle don't get to live. Uh, most cattle, 33 million or so in the United States, are slaughtered every year. Uh, a bull, a PBR bull has won the bovine lottery because they get to buck bulls and then go out to pasture and to stud for, mm. for their natural lives. And uh, yeah, so anybody that thinks that these animals are mistreated is just plain wrong. Yeah. yeah. Now, so Fanchon, yes. That, I mean, it's just so nice to see some insight because I don't, I didn't know much about it. So I have learned so much through you, Fanchon. And please tell us also with this being such a passion of yours, I know that you also turned this into a way of helping others. Tell us about Grit and Grace and how, and what you're doing there. 
Well, yes, you're right. PPR bull riding has been my favorite sport for years since the league first started in 1992. And I always wanted, as a stock counter tractor and bull owner, I always wanted to do something to give back and leave a legacy of excellence, especially for our young ladies. And this weekend is also historic because it marks the beginning of my foundation, Grit and Grace, and our alliance with the PBR, which we are so proud to help and work with them in terms of giving a platform for our young ladies of all ages to really equip them to lead with courage and excellence in everything they do. So what we're doing is we're bringing around ladies who are leading with excellence around the country and we're giving them a spotlight and a platform so that they can then pour into our young girls who come through grit and grace and inspire our young girls to be excellent, to have courage, to have conviction and to be leaders in any area they do, not just Western sports, not just, you know, in terms of rodeo or anything like that or bull riding, um, but in anything that they do. And, and Sean, talk to us a little bit about why this is so important for PBR to really focus on our young ladies. Yeah, you know, for decades we've been uh, pitching this concept of be cowboy. Yes. Um, or cowgirl, of course. But really, be cowboy is, it's not where you drive, it's not where you live, it's not what you wear, it's not your gender, it's nothing about... Um, who you are it's what you do and how you live your life and you know the the grit and grace program is great we didn't have a lot of programs for young ladies to come in you came in and helped us create that um, and it's just fantastic to see we we do as much as we can in every community that we go to uh, to not only give back but to really tell people what being cowboy is all about and it's about living your life with the great values of honesty integrity hard work and and uh, our bull riders work harder than a anybody else in sports yes. so Yes, they do. And I will tell you, when Sean talks about coming into a community all across the nation, we're going to be going with PBR, with my foundation, Grit and Grace. And the PBR is also going to be honoring local businesses. So this is a big weekend for Indianapolis because the PBR is going to be giving the Be Cowboy Award to the Indianapolis 10-Point Coalition for their efforts in our community in reducing crime, um, especially in, in some of the neighborhoods where they are specifically patrolling. And there's going to be a minority-owned business that's going to be honored tomorrow night, Urban Beauty Supply on the south side of Indianapolis. They're going to be honored tonight. One of the owners is also a military vet so when PBR comes into a to a city they are giving in they're pouring in and they are also helping to elevate those in the community who are showing leadership and now for grit and grace to come alongside that and then give a spotlight to young ladies we're gonna have a group of young ladies at the event tomorrow night two young or uh, two young ladies will be crowned winners tomorrow night I think I just gave away a secret but <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, just well, you're but so they will excited. be honored for their leadership. <laughs> I love it. And, and this is, and you this is our excited. first one. Yes. Well, yes, thank I am you so both. excited. And to see, yes, you're welcome. It's going to be a great night. If you guys can get to the event tomorrow night, it's just about sold out. Yeah. But there are a few tickets available. If you can't get there tomorrow night, you can watch on CBS Sports. I know, Melissa, you're going to give everyone the information. Oh, yes, yes, we are. You can tune in tomorrow, CBS Sports <laughs> Network at 8 p.m. Fanshin and Sean, thank you so much for joining us this morning. This was so much fun.